I received a request on our YouTube channel from one of our subscribers who asked me if I would please look at the evidential medium, Suzanne, I suppose it's spelled Geisman, G-I-E-S-E-M-A-N-N, -E -E and her first name is Suzanne, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E. I'd never heard of her before. There are probably thousands of psychics out there. I have no idea who they are. I tend to normally look at the people who are celebrity psychics. And I'm not saying that this woman isn't popular because she sure is. But I am, she doesn't have a TV show. She doesn't have a Wikipedia page. And she doesn't seem to be associated with Thomas John or Teresa Caputo or Tyler Henry or Matt Frazier or any of that ilk. She seems to be um, more in a, in a different area. And, and she is. So let's take a quick look at her. Um, this is a cursory look because, as I said, I haven't read across her. And from what I can see, uh, my opinion, and this is just my opinion, is that she is not in the same category as a lot of the other people that I would normally investigate. But this is fascinating. I really appreciate you suggesting this for us to look into. And I'm happy to look into more um, people or events or whatever that you have. Just leave it in the comments or you can email me at susangerbeck at gmail.com. And please leave comments. I, I love responding to the comments. And if you're so inclined and you like these kinds of videos, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit the little bell. Ding! So you know when I've uploaded a video. I don't, I'm not on a schedule. I have a busy life some days and some days I don't. So I work on them as I have time. Okay, so this woman, her name is Suzanne Geisman. Geisman. G-I-E-S-E-M-N. M-A-N-N. -N. And as I said, I did a cursory look. I did some reading on her. People, a lot of these mediums tend to sit, fit the same kind of kind of category of I'm trying to figure out how a good way of describing this. In my mind, I think this woman is a lot like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And that is because she is a professional. She's educated. Not saying that they aren't all, but this woman isn't in this in this industry, in this business for money. Um, I don't even think she's in into this because she wants power, uh, possibly some influence. But her her goal, her mission, isn't the same as like a Matt Fraser or Teresa Caputo. You know, somebody who wants to be on TV, get another show, that kind of thing. This woman genuinely seems to believe that she is in contact with the dead. You know, I can't get into her head completely. I have some suspicions and I'll, I'll point them out here in a minute. But she feels like somebody like Conan Doyle, who is already independently wealthy. And he did not need to go into spiritualism, which he did full force, just jumped right in with his both feet, him and his wife. And, um, you know, befriended Harry Houdini, and there was this tense kind of friendship between them for a very long time, where Harry Houdini was kind of trying to get him to come along and say that spiritualism isn't, there, it's, it's just tricks and, and, and so on. But now Conan Doyle came into spiritualism, you know, maybe he was kind of on the fringes of it for a while. But after World War I, when his son died, I think his son's name was Arthur. I think, why does that sound familiar? Anyway, his son died. And World War I was just tragic, right? Uh, this, was, this was a devastating time for families and uh, who were losing their, their family members, young men in the prime of their lives, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. And here they go off to fight in the war and tragically they've died. It's, it's, you're there it's just it's, i mean all deaths of this sort are cruel and awful and senseless but as a parent sometimes you want to try to to make sense of it and, and, and you know as you guys know i talk about this all the time grief is 
a just giant bear that you can't deal with. It's to some people just can't handle it. And I, I can't even imagine it's, 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 it's massive. So it can make people see things in a different way than they probably hadn't seen before. Um, they may be more willing to um, gather comfort and hope that there is an afterlife and they will see that loved one again from mediumship that it, it's not a large jump if somebody says to me oh well you know i didn't really believe in mediumship until my husband spouse brother sister parent died or even my pet i never really thought of it before and now i just can't live to um beyond i i have to make contact with them i have to make sure they're okay so that's common in a lot of ways it doesn't surprise me at all this woman um she is oh, okay so our youtube subscriber um, who asked me to do a um a look into this medium um here's what she wrote it raises questions about how someone affiliated with a government organization can simultaneously pursue a career as a medium. And that's why they wanted me to look into this, this medium. So looking around on her social media and her posts, her videos and, and somewhat, Suzanne seems to be very spiritual. Now, I don't know if this is a recent thing or if it's, this new part of her life is where she's extremely religious um more so than most people i know that are that are very religious this is this is definitely her calling her her inner being it's her identity she is a retired um i like how they say former in many of the things I read, which to me is retired. She is retired. Let me look at my notes here a second, because I wrote these down. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to show you. I was going to show you an article. And this summed it up pretty well. It was an interview she did. I think it's a local paper for her. And it is called The Hilton Head. And it's called Change a Mission. And this is from 2020, Christmas time, 2020. And she's a former U.S. Navy commander. She's in Moss Creek. And I'm not sure where that is, but I think it's the East Coast. She's written a lot of books, which, okay, whatever. Now, there's several clues in my mind that make me think of what might be going on here. She says her transformation, according to the article, began when serving as an aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on 9-11, when she witnessed firsthand the destruction of the Twin Towers and severe damage to the Pentagon. Okay. Got it. So, I don't know what that might have been like. I have a, a friend who was at the Pentagon when it was, um, the when it was, when it, the plane hit and um, he was just as you can imagine devastated and I have no idea what this would do to your I, I hate to say the word but psyche how how this affects you to have been in a situation being the aide to a joint chief of staff the chairman of the joint chief of staff I have no idea how that would affect you because the randomness of the people who were there who die, the just the senseless destruction of of people and and buildings and and so on. It, it's so here's what she says. She says, so many questions lingered. Why do some live while others die? What happens after death? And what is our life purpose? Okay, so these are all spiritual questions that she has um that occurred to her. And I don't question those at all because if some people have those questions and they're legitimate questions to have, especially if you have a spiritual bent where you're, you believe in an afterlife, you believe in, you know, the world of religion and, and so on, that there is a purpose. 
these are not my beliefs. I would probably answer the questions completely differently. I, I wouldn't have those questions. But to somebody who is seeing the world with instant death, people are here and then they're gone. And there was no reason for them to die. I mean, there there wasn't a like a an illness or something of the sort. You know, it wasn't, it was just they're going about their day and now they're dead. And that that must be a different kind of way, maybe of addressing um how you look at life and death, the randomness of it. Hopefully, um, I would think that a lot of people would think that there is somebody in charge, somebody making these decisions, somebody who can can intercede or transition, or there must be a purpose for the reason why my person is here and now they're gone. And all these other people are here and now they're gone. And there was no reason that they, why were they selected? I I, I wouldn't think they were selected. That's, but that's me. I'm, I'm in a totally different mindset, but yes, I definitely get this. Okay. So going back to the article and what she said, So she is a well-traveled woman. She is educated. She's wealthy, um, on, on, on. She's married, long, long marriage to her husband, who was a um, a former naval captain. You know, looks like she's got the good life to live now, but she's taken on this new, I, I guess you would call it a career, avocation, because she is all in on this world. She lectures, she writes books, she um, is online, she's got a YouTube channel and so on. Now, after 9-11, this makes me also think that this triggers what is next to come for her. She says they were on the coast of Croatia when the couple received news that her husband's daughter, a sergeant in the Marine Corps, was fatally struck by lightning. And in another article I read, the the daughter, her name is Susan, was pregnant with her with a son. She was six months pregnant. So again, the same with the with the idea of nine eleven and the suddenness of a bolt of lightning coming down and and ending the life of your beloved stepdaughter and her um, six month old. Um, you know, she's pregnant with a with a son and. And I'm sure the family all knew, it, you know, she was showing and 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 how devastating that it might have been. I, I don't know if there was other children. I don't know if there's if this was the only child. It, it's not that important, but I still think it is grappling with that instant here and gone in an instant senseless. Is there a God? Is there somebody who is deciding these things? And if so, what is the purpose? Why was this one, her stepdaughter chosen? Okay, so if we move on to the article, in the article, it talks again about how when she starts out with her, it says her grappled with a heartache of loss. As she grappled with a heartache of loss, she revisited the troubling questions and set out to find answers to, in the process, she discovered it was not only possible to communicate with those who had passed on, but in those, the, those spirits had a great deal to say, right? So she had an existential crisis saying, why her? Why was she chosen? What happened? And in her mind she decided that there was a way of communicating so she starts off she's mentored by these two people jack janet and mavis whom i've never heard of um and both acclaimed evidential mediums i'm sorry they're not acclaimed evidential mediums we never even heard of them and if if they're no uh, -uh. it's just a word that's an adjective people use it doesn't mean anything and also that word evidential mediums, it just makes my skin crawl, evidential, they they provide evidence. Well, my idea of evidence and their idea of evidence are on, on different planets. Okay, so she began communicating with her beloved stepdaughter and other spiritual beings. And this is really important. And this goes again back to um, Conan Doyle and his wife and how after the loss of their son, 
that grief piles in. Why him? Why, why did you take him? Oh, dear God up there who is almighty and omnipotent. Why did you take my, my son? And here's this woman, Suzanne, and she is, she is communicating. She says she's communicating with her stepdaughter, a person she knows. This is, this is, she had been married. I don't know how many years, but she was retired at this point. And her husband's retired at this point. So, and her daughter was old enough to be in the Marines. So I would assume she had known her for a long period of her life. And if you're communicating with her, you're communicating with a known person, somebody you know. So I'm not sure where we get the evidential because she's going to say things that she knows. So, I mean, anybody you know and love that you've known well, you can have that conversation with them and it, it feels like you're communicating with them. So did, did Suzanne, was this like a play acting where she's having this conversation with her in her head and she thinks she's hearing things? I don't know. I, like I said, I can't get into this woman's head. It's, it's, it's interesting um, for an outsider like myself. It is a bit fascinating to kind of, Think about what happened. Why are you on this journey? Why did you go this way with your, your understanding of what making sense of this thing happening? So I don't know. I just, I'm pointing that out because I think it's really interesting. So she gets into it further and further and she's written many books and so on. And a couple of the quotes from her, from Suzanne. She says, I want other people to know that life continues after death and that it's safe to believe. Safe to believe. I'm not quite sure what she meant by that. She, she relies on evidence, facts about the deceased, like names, hobbies, or dates to validate that her communications are real. Now, if you are a follower of my channel, you know that that is suspect big time. So the thing she says in here about, okay, another thing she says, her goal isn't only to serve those who have lost loved ones. She also wants to serve those across the veil who no longer have a voice across the veil. In other words, they've died. So I don't know what else I can say about this woman because she just seems like she's full of hope and love and that her message is to communicate with people and to help them grieve. You all who've been watching my channel for a while understand that I do not find um, this mediumship thing that some people do as being helpful to grieve because it doesn't actually allow you to finally grieve, to be able to really come to terms with the grief that you have and, and seek out a licensed professional or someone who actually is able to understand and help you deal with your grief. I don't think it's helpful. I know lots of people argue would argue with me about it because I've seen a lot of the harm and um, I don't see a lot of the, the people who reach out to me are not reaching out to me very often who've had success. Uh, they feel like they'll say to me that, oh, yes, I, I feel so much better. I, I, I'm in contact with my daughter all the time. And, and you know, and <laughs> it doesn't feel like moving on when you're constantly going back to the mediums. And saying, okay, what is what does my daughter got to say today? And what's going on now? It doesn't feel like healing when you are like stuck in a stuck in like a groove on a record player. If you guys remember record players, where you're just constantly going back to it and back to it. And oftentimes what they do is they relive the death. And I know that this woman in some of the things, some of the articles I read, it says that she that these people often 
the dead that she's in contact with often reenact their their funeral and it's an, in a way that nobody else would have possibly have known and so their deaths and their funeral it's common for mediums to do that and it's it's odd right so i'm not sure that that's healthy and moving onable but i'm not a licensed grief specialist or i have no degree i i just as a person think that that's probably not helpful so I think I'm going to sum this up with my idea of what is dangerous and what is unhealthy is probably very different from the world of Suzanne's where her idea of hope and love and keeping the spirit alive in a way of communicating with them is, is very different. I I haven't watched any of her readings. I'm assuming that they're typical of a lot of the other readings I have watched with a, lots of other mediums in that, you know, they get a name, they get a hobby, they get something, but it's it's like cold reading. So I don't know if somebody has a really good reading that this woman in particular has done then i would love to see it but going back to lastly to the woman who left the comment on our youtube channel about wanting us to look into wanting me to look into this suzanne person she said let me read it again it raises questions about how someone affiliated with a government organization can simultaneously pursue a career as a medium and from what i can understand Suzanne's already retired and she's out of the government by the time she starts taking on this career as an evidential medium. So those are separate. And I'm reminded of my friend, Rob Palmer, who <laughs> had a clearance, you know, a security clearance. And I know other people, lots of other people have security clearances and they, you have to sign all these forms. You have to have these background checks. You have, you know, if you're in contact with a foreign national or, you know, if you're in contact with these other things, or if you're going to be traveling to this other place, you have to, you have to constantly report that you're in contact with these other places and other, you know, that could be um, potential problems. Like you can't just go to Russia on a cruise and, and <laughs> that will be really probably frowned upon because, you know, um, if you're an American and you have a security clearance. So he, he points out, on all the years he's had to fill out these security clearance forms, never did anyone ever say, and have you been in contact with a spirit medium? Because, you know, obviously if, if they could be in contact with, with dead people and see into, you know, this other supposed realm, that wouldn't that be a security problem? Wouldn't that be a, a potential leak of the security kind of thing? So that was a really good point. And he says, you've never noticed that. And I've talked to other people who have security clearance and they said, no, I've never had to report seeing a psychic or anything of that kind that that, that might be a problem with my clearance. Um, oh, and one last thing. I noticed that uh, the Suzanne, she's had at least one person I noticed on her channel from the Helping Parents Heal organization. And the her Helping Parents Heal organization is an organization that I have looked into many times and I find it extremely problematic. It's, it's um, at least the online version is a grief group of parents that are meeting and their child has died and they allow mediumship and they encourage mediumship. They think that they're healing their, these other people in this grief group by encouraging mediumship with them. But at least this is what I've been able to, to see. Um, it looks really dangerous because the people are already in grief and then they allow in mediums to to mingle with them and and give and suggest them. And this is over social media. So the these people's Facebook pages are right there. I mean, so it would be very simple to hot read them. Plus, they've been sharing with other people in the group their grief. And, and so it would be really simple to hot read somebody. It just feels like 
it's it's extremely manipulative especially since a lot of these people are in grief for such a long time and they're feeding off of each other's grief and again i am not a licensed grief therapist i don't know if that's healthy just throwing that out there you can let me know in the comments and call me out on it if you think that um this is something that is probably a way of healing is to perpetually stay in that state of um being in contact with your loved one and and so on i i i'm not saying grief goes away i i'm just saying that i don't know if that is helpful you know don't subscribe to my channel if you think i'm going to say something different that's that's my thoughts on this anyway um so i hope this is a interesting look into this one person i do see a lot of similarities with sir author, sir author colin doyle he was the man who created sherlock holmes and if you have other people you want to suggest that's fine i'm very interested in in readings audio or video readings i can make it so that i am not using your name or I can make it so the reading is edited in such a way when I play it and, and talk about it that you aren't revealed. Only you would know that is your reading. So I'm, I'm happy to hide that if you want to. But I I really like those. You can send those to me at susangerbic at gmail.com. Um, the reading might be difficult to get to me because of the audio, um, you know, how much is on email you can't necessarily send audio but i will show you how to upload that to dropbox or we can upload it to a video channel or something like that so that you can get a large file like that to me i'm happy to look at that and as i said i'm happy to interview people i'd love to interview more people who have um an interest or a belief in in spirit um mediumship past experiences that's my door is open i'm happy to to do that um, as a group, we're trying to understand mediumship and we're trying to understand the tricks of it, the the how it how it appears to look like it's real. I find it very interesting. And if you're a subscriber to our channel, then I think that you probably feel it's interesting too. Just let me know. Thanks, everybody.